Hello everyone, this is Keith and today's webinar is going to cover strategic alarm notification in water and wastewater facilities. Uh, this webinar is being brought to you by CH2M and WIN911. Uh, we're going to have a special guest today from CH2M, uh, Yuri Osoki. And today's agenda, um, so Yuri Osokin is a system integrator uh, with CH2M. Uh, he's been working with them for about four years now and has done quite a few SCADA implementations um, along with Win101. Some of the other things we're going to cover are challenges and trends in water wastewater. Uh, why are water and wastewater facilities adopting alarm notification systems? We're going to go over a couple use cases that Yuri, um, ha where Yuri has implemented Win on a One. We're also going to go over solution overview and demonstration, and then a brief Q and A session at the end of this. So, we kind of bring ourselves to introduce water wastewater industry challenges, and a couple of these are pretty important to point out. So industry-wide estimates show 48% of unplanned downtime occurs to equipment, equipment issues. Um, WIN 901 is really a solution that's able to give you real-time alerts from your SCADA system and other data sources uh, via OPC uh, when equipment issues arise. So that's one of the number one points that we always like to cover on our software. Uh, as soon as a equipment issue arises, uh, we're going to immediately send you an alert um, through some of our unique notification methods that will be covered throughout this presentation. Um, one of the other major um, trends we're seeing is population growth, uh, really stressing treatment infrastructure uh, as well as staff. Um, as the population increases, um, so does cost. So when on a one, in a sense, is also helping alleviate cost uh, by not having um, or basically for your facility not having to have someone there 24-7. Uh, when on a one can do the monitoring at night, uh, so it's able to alleviate having staff there um, all the time. Uh, as well as uh, compliance requirements, uh, when on a one is also able to help facilities um, be basically monitored on a 24-7 basis uh, by providing critical uh, response information on. So real-time notification, um, kind of how we covered on the last slide, one on one is able to really give you a remote notification um, from some of the newest uh, technology methods. So we've seen a shift from moving from pagers to email to SMS. Uh, so that's a very popular way of receiving a notification uh, using an email gateway to send an SMS through your cellular provider. There really isn't any cost to that um, on the hardware front, uh, but you do have to have a cell phone uh, with a basic text messaging plan. Uh, we're also seeing operators move from flip phones to smartphones. So as uh, we develop new things like smartphone apps, specifically for the Win on One product, operators are able to download that on their iOS or Android device and simply get a push notification from our mobile 911 server when there's an alarm that occurs from their SCADA system. And as well, we're also seeing a migration away from analog phone lines to voice over IP. So really starting to see some of that physical hardware disappear, uh, whereas you can set up a 911 system on a server or a physical box uh, with access to the internet to be able to utilize a VoIP system and all we need is a VoIP server that provides SIP services and you can use services like Cisco Call Manager uh, as well as uh, something like Skype Connect. So we still see a trend in the industry where uh, water wastewater plants are still without, access, or without um, internet access. Um, this is a traditional isolated network model so on the win on one side, we're trying to address security concerns about that by still providing remote notification methods um, that support offline SCADA systems as well as offline plants. 
So we can still do analog voice callouts with our latest architecture through using something like a USB Tabby modem, as well as just using your standard basic text messaging through an SMS modem, um, either uh, Ethernet IP or serial SMS modem. Um, the vendor we use for our hardware right now is Multitech. Uh, we've been using them for quite a few years now and have found their products to be reliable. So we ask ourselves the question, why alarm notification? Um, one of the unique things about Win on a One is uh, we give you different tools to manage, your, or to manage operator schedules um, as well as a um, very advanced and unique notification tree, um, something we call strategies and tactics on our latest product. But it really gives you the power to control who gets notified and when. Um, there's also different things that you can configure. Um, if an operator doesn't respond within a certain amount of time, um, there's different conditions that you can set up uh, for the software to know to obviously notify someone else. Maybe if maintenance didn't respond within 10 minutes and it was a critical alarm, you would then communicate it to a higher level personnel like a manager. And at the end of the day, you really have to ask yourself, what's at stake if the problem persists? Um, is a, a critical piece of equipment going to, to damage itself? Um, is a freezer um, over a, a critical temperature where it's going to destroy something? Um, but we'll keep it in the confines of water, wastewater. So that could be something like a tank level um, going into the overflow condition. So with Win901, um, you're able to get those critical alarms and events uh, delivered outside of your traditional control room um, in, in traditional models where somebody just sits in a control room, watches a screen, picks up a phone, and is able to simply route the alarm out um, by calling that person's extension. But Win901 takes it, obviously, a step further in giving you a software package that can handle that and be able to easily organize everything without having that manual process involved. So now we're going to get into our first use case and Yuri is going to um, kind of take, take us into a deeper dive into a project where he specifically used Win 911 at a water wastewater facility and I will now turn it over to him. For, for the use case A, um, so this will be an example of a customer that uses um, SMS as a primary form of notification and the phone as um, essentially a backup. Yeah, the reason they prefer SMS is due to surrounding noise and um, operators often don't hear calls, um, but they definitely check SMS messages often and it works better for them this way. Um, additionally, they don't have smartphones, which is um, another reason why they wouldn't um, currently be um, open to using a Win911 mobile app. Uh, the SMS messages themselves are sent via um, IP-based modem. Um, and that modem sits on the network versus being physically attached uh, to Win911 mobile, uh, Win911 server via serial cable or um, embedded cards such as, um, um, as, as there's an option to uh, for embedded card. Now, in this case, a Win11 is not a physical a server. It is a virtual server that sits on top of a single virtual host, which runs um, VMware hypervisor. Um, in addition to that, um, that single host uh, can accommodate multiple um, SCADA servers. Now, the benefit of that um, allows for ease of management, uh, the backup functionality is definitely a lot easier to back up Win911 versus a physical server um, and potential redundancy, uh, additional redundancy that, that um, a true server can provide versus um, potential smaller um, uh, station, physical station that Win911 will ride on. Um, so in this instance, that's what the set setup is. SMS is a primary, phone call is a backup, uh, Win911 sends alarms, SMS message, straight SMS to IP-based modem, and this um, implementation uh, has, has worked pretty, very well for them, and um, we definitely 
try to, um, when applicable, um, migrate Win on one to virtual environment versus um, keeping it on a, on a physical box. So in the use case B, um, I provide a kind of different example of how we um, can be utilizing Win on one one provide additional uh, redundancy. So for <clears throat> so in this instance, the client again is using SMS as a primary phone option, a phone call as a, as a not as a backup essentially. But in this instance, the SMS messages are sent. Um, it's really email converted to SMS. So there's no IP-based um, modem. Um, it, the notifications from Windows One actually are emails being uh, converted to SMS and received by the end users. Now we are considering using Win 911 Mobile for this client. Some of the considerations are um, naturally Win 911 Mobile requires a smartphone that is Android or um, iOS um, capable, which is essentially iPhone and iPads, then the cost of service uh, depends on how many um, um, data service, additional data service that will be required um, to utilize the app potentially. Then there's a the cost of licensing to get this feature uh, available and the uh, cost of the setup and maintenance. Um, all those things are combined in the decision to um, implement Win 911 uh, mobile edition. Now it's worth mentioning that in this particular instance, um, Win 911 is virtual server as well. However, it is writing not on a single um, host, but rather on a, what's called hyper-converged infrastructure solution that effectively provides uh, high availability for um, Win 911, meaning that if, um, let's say, the, the physical um, server when the, that hosts virtual Win 911, if it fails, then it will be autom the Win 911 virtual server will be automatically uh, migrated to the next best um, physical host, and which means the, there is no input required for the from the end user. All of this happens automatically, and um, if um, IP-based modem is used, that even uh, simplifies um, that, that switch over versus having a USB attached um, modems to multiple hosts, physical hosts. And uh, we've been utilizing um, hyperconverged infrastructure for a while now and it's has proven to be a reliable solution that in addition, additionally provides um, um, kind of high availability for the um, um, for Win 911 server, and so um, that's just an, a kind of another implementation that we did. Um, but most uh, uh, end users prefer SMS messages uh, versus uh, phone calls, and that's what we've seen so far. And we definitely um, uh, try to migrate to uh, virtual infrastructure as much as we possibly can. Um, granted, some instances, um, maybe having a physical um, system de designated to Win 911 is the only option, but in most instances, our uh, preferred um, design recommendation is to migrate Win 911 to a virtual environment. And due to the nature of the critical infrastructure we're dealing with, um, we always are mindful of the redundancy and you know, trying to put it in. Um, in different areas to, to make sure to potentially eliminate any uh, single point of failures um, where, you know, and the virtual infrastructure essentially allows uh, us to provide that and simplify the backup and restore procedure. Thanks a lot, Ari, for that really specific um, information um, as far as using one-on-one -on -one in different virtual environments. And um, it's something that we definitely are cognizant of um, in, in finding new ways to use Win on one in virtualized environments, um, trying to obviously provide hardware that can be virtualized, uh, as well as new notification methods that don't necessarily always rely on physical hardware, um, and that's something that we're turning our sights to um, probably over the next year um, as we focus on uh, development of our mobile app and 
specifically redundancy. So next generation, um, I don't know how many um, in, these, in this session uh, are aware that we rolled out some new license levels in April, um, specifically de designed for flexibility and scalability. Uh, this is really our new architecture. Um, the product was formerly known as Enterprise. Uh, we took it and broke it up into three different license levels that catered to uh, specifically um, different installations for water, wastewater. One-on-one -on -one standard, interactive, and advanced. One-on-one um, -on -one advanced uh, might cater to a, a, a larger type a municipality um, that is has a, a lot of different moving pieces as far as uh, different staff with um, complex schedules um, that can definitely handle that. Um, the interactive is, is really, um, I would say, the equivalent to what was formerly known as one-on-one -on -one pro version 7. So that's really a license level that we tried to Really mimic and, and provide a lot of the same features as well as enhancements um, for you to be able to uh, design different schedules. Um, supports voice over IP, comes with our mobile app, but we won't get too much into that. Um, we'll try and demonstrate that for you um, through the demo that Stephen's going to kind of show us. Um, yes, yeah, so this is uh, Stephen Rivas, product manager. Uh, at Win91. So now what I want to do is go ahead and give you guys a quick solution overview of the newest Win91 platform, starting off with the Direct Connect. So uh, many of you guys are using our uh, older version uh, of Win91, which we call version 7, uh, know that it had some Direct Connects and uh, the newest platform, uh, we still have Direct Connects and we've extended some of the functionality of those Direct Connects. So what is uh, an what are the advantages of using the Direct Connect? Uh, one, you configure your alarms one time. You configure them in your SCADA, and you don't have to reconfigure them over in Win911. So you're not uh, maintaining two sets of alarms. You just maintain them within your SCADA system. Uh, Two-way alarm acknowledgement. Uh, if you acknowledge an alarm in Win911, we can pass that alarm back to your SCADA system and vice versa. Uh, we also, depending on the, the SCADA that you're using, track who acknowledged it and can also pass that back to your uh, SCADA system. So if uh, Bob acts something with his with his phone, you can know that and, and potentially log that back into your historian. Uh, the native integration, uh, which we use uh, subscriptions and filters, makes the setup time much quicker. And uh, the way that is done is we filter on specific alarm properties. And that's going to vary depending on the SCADA that you're using. Uh, some you can filter on name, uh, some type of grouping, property, severity. Uh, just, we we use what we can for which scale, for a particular SCADA, but it generally you can always filter on the name of an alarm, some type of group that it's in. So, for example, in Factory Talk, that's alarm class. For iFix, that would be alarm area. And in touch, it's literally called groups and system platform areas. <laughs> so, so a bunch of different ways to filter on there. So by using these filters, what you're doing is you're not importing anything into Win91. You're creating these filters. So when you create new alarms within your SCADA, if that new alarm matches your filter that you created, then it's automatically going to come into Win91 and be routed to the operators that need to hear about it. So you don't have to uh, run an import, uh, find your tag, put it into Win91, and... Uh, delete any old tags that you may have deleted. So uh, escalation would be the next part. So once you get your data in, how do you send, uh, how do you get those alarms to the people that need to know about it? So in the newer platform, we have uh, added a lot of flexibility into, into the escalation piece of Win911. Uh, so let's go through that real quick. The first part would be uh, tactics. Tactics are uh, notification workflows. You can think of these as a call-out list. It takes the place of a contact list in version 7. And there's two ways to do this. We have what we call advanced tactics, uh, which I'll go over a little more, uh, where you're, little, uh, you're literally creating a workflow that uh, the software will follow to make sure you're notifying the correct people. You can also use simple call-out lists, which we call basic tactics. So that's going to be similar to what you had in version 7 on the contact list within a group. 
And then once you create your tactics, you need to know when to trigger them, when to execute a tactic. And you do that with what we call a strategy. So in the previous version, again, I keep comparing it to version 7, the, these action pol policies were hard-coded, so you didn't have control over them. Now you can say, when, when an alarm meets a particular condition, what do you want the software to do? Do you want it to start a new tactic or re-notify the people that you've already notified? Do you want to stop notifying? Uh, do you want to act an alarm and so on? So you have all the control there within a strategy of, of what the software should do uh, given any alarm condition. And then scheduling. So scheduling uh, got a, a much needed overhaul from version seven. Uh, it's much easier now to create shift schedules, rolling schedules, holiday schedules, and you can use these schedules to uh, attach uh, to a contact. So if you know the contact is gonna receive alarms uh, eight to five, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can also use these schedules to make decisions in those advanced tactics saying, if it's this time of day, who do I notify? And if it's not that time of day, uh, who should I notify then? Uh, and that's great for on-call schedules and stuff like that. So here is a basic tactic. I just wanted to show you uh, some examples of what I was just talking about. So this is a simple call-out list. It's very easy to add people to this list. Uh, you can put them in any order that you want, um, and it will follow that order. So if you want to do uh, email, wait a couple minutes and then do a phone call, just put it in the list as you would expect it to go. So in this case, if it's going to email Bob, Alice, Joe, and then it's going to call someone on an on-call phone and then email someone else. So this makes it much easier to uh, add people into a, um, a contact list and all the delays that you need are all in one place. You don't have to jump between a group and a phone book to get the delays exactly right. It's all right here in, in one spot. So the next part, so that again, that's basic tactics. So that's one way to do a call out list. The more advanced way is happily named advanced tactics. And this is a drag and drop workflow. This is literally what it looks like in the software. You drag blocks into a workspace. So what is great about this is you can make decisions on the fly depending on a uh, certain alarm uh, criteria. So in this example, I can check to see if an alarm is wearing a particular label. And if it is, I can go then check the severity. Is it a high severity alarm? Well, I know if it's high severity, I need to notify uh, the water treatment plant operators and the managers. If it's not high severity, I'll give it 10 minutes for it to clear. And so you see me go out to the left side and then I'll just notify the operators. There's much more that you can do with advanced tactics. This is just a small example. So once you have your tactics created, you need to execute the, or tell the software when to run them and you do that with a strategy. So you create a strategy and it's literally just a list of conditions and a list of actions of what it should do. So when you get initial event, what should you do? You should start a tactic and the particular tactic in this example is called water treatment plant uh, storage tanks. If an alarm state changes, what do you want it to do? Well, I just want to re-notify anyone that had previously heard about the alarm. So I've got that trigger in there. If the alarm becomes acknowledged, I want to stop the strategy. What stop strategy means is I'm going to stop notifying people. So once it's acknowledged and no one else wants to hear about it, I'll stop notifying. I can also put in repeating timers. Uh, so if this alarm remains unacknowledged, unacknowledged for more than 20 minutes after the initial event, I can re-notify. And then every 20 minutes, I'll re-notify again. And in some examples, uh, I've had a lot of customers ask me, can we re-notify even if alarm is acknowledged? You certainly could. You could just change the, the condition for what's going to stop your strategy to a terminal event, and then you can repeat all you want until the alarm goes to a terminal state. So we've got the basic tactic, tactics and advanced tactics. Those are triggered by strategies, uh, and the strategies have uh, alarm conditions in them. So a quick overview of the, of the scheduling tool. We tried to make it as, uh, as simple as possible uh, compared to what we had before. Uh, so it's a, a simple calendar control. If you've used Outlook before, you use Google Calendar or even iCal, 
uh, you'll know how to use this tool, I believe. So what you do in here is you create schedules for when people will get notifications. And we've made it very easy to create recurrences. Um, so if you wanted to create a quick schedule that persists uh, for years and years and years, you can do that uh, just by choosing uh, which days it should repeat, the time, the start time, end time, and when it should stop. If you'd never want it to stop, just choose no end date. So it's very easy to create these schedules. So once you create these schedules, again, you can apply these to connections, or you can use schedules to make decisions within an advanced tactic. So what, what I want to go over now are roles and, and uh, labels. So roles are a way to group your contacts within the Win91 system together. Um, so you're grouping, if you have a set of contacts that you know these are water treatment plant operators, you can group them by that. So you create this role and you assign that role to these contacts. And um, so you can have operators, managers, or, or whatever fits your need. And similarly, literally, you can create labels, which are a way to group your alarms together. So it's the same thing, same idea, but you're doing it to alarms. So you can group alarms by uh, whatever you want, uh, by location, by severity, um, whatever will fit your need. So why would you do this? It's because it makes it your configuration easier uh, to, uh, to maintain, and uh, it gives you a dynamic uh, alarm escalation, which I will demonstrate in the live demo. So here's an example of how you add those uh, roles to a particular uh, person. So if I create these three roles, I can add these uh, roles to a particular person. So, so I've got this connection. This is an email connection. I've gone ahead and defined some details, and I've attached the engineer's role to this person. I can attach more roles if I need to, but uh, for this particular person, we'll just add one. And so alarm labels are very similar. You're just creating those labels, and then when you create a filter subscription or the, the way you bring your alarms in, you attach a label to it. So this is a factory talk example. I'm filtering on alarm class. If an al if alarm comes in with an alarm class of station one, I'm going to stick a label on it called station one alarms. So uh, again, I can show you guys an example of this in the live demo. Every alarm that would come in based off of this filter would then uh, have that label attached to it. So try to overview, try to summarize here. Um, bring it all together. I have alarms. I need to bring them into my software using a subscription. So I create these subscriptions. You can create as many as you want. Those subscriptions are then assigned to a strategy. The strategy determines uh, what the software should do depending on the particular alarm state that it received from the subscription. And then it can trigger tactics to notify uh, people. So that is how these three pieces work together to send a notification out to someone. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to another uh, computer and show you guys a quick uh, demo of how I can create um, a basic tactic, how you, how you set that up, and then another example of how uh, you can create a dynamic uh, escalation workflow with advanced tactics. So let me switch over to that computer. Real quick, sorry, let me go back to slide. I'm jumping all over the place, sorry guys. There we go. So give me one second. <laughs> all right, so you guys should be able to see my screen now. This is the configuration GUI for Win911. It's in a web browser, which means you can access this over the network. You don't have to be on the same machine as Win91 anymore. So this is also protected with Windows authentication. So when you access this, you have to log in with a valid Windows user account, or you can't make any edits to the system. So the first part of creating a contact list would be to create a contact. In this, so in this case, what we'll do is we'll just create a quick email connection. I already have a few in here. So I've got Keith and some made up people. And I'll go ahead and add myself. So you just type in a name for that person, give them an email address. 
uh, give them a schedule if you like. Uh, I want this particular person to act, so I'm going to go to act options and allow him to act. So what that means is I can reply to this email and I can acknowledge the alarm without having to type anything in. I'm just, I'm just replying and it acts. If you don't want someone to act, then just don't turn that feature on. So once you create a connection, uh, it doesn't matter if it's an email connection, mobile, SMS, or voice, you need to go to your tactics. So I'll go to notification, I'll go to tactics. So in this first example, I want to make a basic tactic. So what I'll do is I'll hit the plus button down here to create a new one. So I've got to give it a name. So again, this is just a call. This is my contact list. So I'll call this my basic tactic. Uh, I could put a description to give more context if I needed, uh, edit the delays and so on. So I'll hit the plus button. I see all my email contacts. I can select them all and go ahead and just add them in. So now I can sort, I can move these guys around depending on the order that I want them to go in, but I'm happy with this order. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it. So I've created my tactics. So I have my call out list. So the next step would be to create a strategy. So when do I want to start that tactic? So what I'll do is create a new strategy. Uh, this is a basic strategy, meaning uh, you only have control over which tactic you're going to run and when you will stop notifying. So I'll call this my basic strategy. So I created a new tactic, and it's not notify all, so I'm going to hit the browse button over here. I'm going to choose my basic tactic, which is that list I just made. So when I get a new alarm, I'm going to notify that people in that tactic, and when I want to stop notifying when the alarm becomes terminal, which means it's inactive and acknowledged. So I'll go ahead and save this guy. So now I have a tactic and a strategy, but I don't have any alarms. So what I can do is I'll go ahead and use OPC real quick. I've got an OPC server defined. I'll go ahead and do a quick import of a, a tag or two. Uh, I know I've got a tag in here called gate, so I'll choose that. And uh, what I'll do is, um, actually I think I've got another one with an alarm. So not that one, this one. So what, on the bottom here, I can choose what I want to do with this OPC tag. I want to create a value when it e uh, an alarm when it equals the value equals one. So I'll choose that, and now I need to choose which strategy these alarms belong to. I just created a strategy called my basic strategy, so I'm going to choose it, and I'm going to import those two tags. Now I can go to my alarm screen here. I see those two tags. I can edit the descriptions and, and all that within uh, within the details of a, an alarm, but you'll notice it's a, assigned to my basic strategy. So when these alarms occur, it's going to go to this strategy. It knows that on initial event, I want to start my basic tactic, and so it's going to go ahead and start this tactic that we just made with those people in it. So if I wanted to change a tactic, uh, if I add someone new into the system, all I have to do is go into this edit button, uh, hit the plus button, I don't have someone new to add, or well, let's just say you want to delete somebody, you just select them, hit delete, hit save, and the change takes effect immediately. There's no more restarting anything, it just happens right away. So that is, um, a, that's a, an overview of the basic tactic and a basic strategy. So now, what if I want to do a dynamic escalation? What I'll do is I'll use the same contacts uh, that I had before, but I'll edit them. Uh, so in my case, I've got Steven, but you'll notice I don't have any roles. So Steven, I'm going to be a station uh, one operator. So I'll go ahead and add that role. I've added these already. So once I hit save, I'm now that uh, a member of that role. So now I'll go to Keith. Keith gets to be station two. I get to be number one, you get to be number two. And uh, so we'll save that. We'll just do station one and station two for now. Uh, so now these roles exist on these contacts. So now what we want to do is we want to go to our tactics. And this time we'll go to advanced. So what I want to do is I want to create a tactic that says if I get a, a station one alarm, I want to send that to um, station one operators. If I get a station two alarm, I want to send that to station two operators. Uh, so first thing to do is add in a decision block for that. So I'll drag in this label decision block, configure him, say check to see if the alarm is a station one alarm. If it is, I want to notify all. 
and I want to notify that particular role. So I'll choose station one. If it's not a station one alarm, I want to check again. Let's see if it's a different alarm or it has a different alarm label. So this time I'll choose station two alarms. So I'll add that in and I'll add another notification block. This time I'll choose uh, station two and there we go. So we're done. So I can call this my advanced strategy, I mean tactic, sorry, and save it. So again, all this is going to do is it's going to check to see what kind of alarm it is and then notify the appropriate role that I have identified. So now I need to create a strategy for that. So what I'll do is I'll create a new strategy. I'll go straight into advanced mode so I can control my policies. Uh, advanced strategy. And what I want to do is on an initial event, I want to start a tactic. I know I want to create the tactic I just made, so I'll choose it. When the alarm state changes, I want to re-notify. When the alarm becomes terminal, I want to stop notification. And like in that uh, slide uh, I showed you earlier on a repeating timer, let's say every hour uh, that this alarm is not, uh, has not gone to the terminal state, I want to re-notify whoever had been notified that this alarm is still active. Uh, so we'll go ahead and save it. So now I've created a strategy and a tactic. And now I'll go over to my factory talk module. And I've got some subscriptions here already. So I've got a station one subscription that says any alarm that comes in that is part of an alarm class of uh, station one, give it this particular label. I've got the same thing for station two, give it this particular label. So then what I need to do is assign that to an application, which I already have defined. So I'll go to my subscription routes within here. I say station one subscription. I'm going to change that to go to my advanced strategy. Station two subscription go to my advanced strategy. So now any alarms that match those subscriptions are going to be uh, uh, handled by these two strategies, which in the advanced tactic will uh, notify the appropriate person. So that's how quick it is to set it up. So what's cool about this, again, for the advanced tactics is if I create a new alarm in Factory Talk and I put it in the right alarm class, I don't have to touch Win 911. It will automatically go to the appropriate people. So they, they don't have to touch anything. This is true for our other direct connects for iFix, Simplicity, InTouch, and System Platform. It's only not true for OPCDA where we don't filter anything. You have to define particular tags. Now, the same thing is true for contacts. So if I create a new contact and I want him to be put into my escalation, I don't have to go edit the escalation. I just have to add them in, give them some name, and attach the appropriate role. And that's what, and that will get him into the alarm notification, and then you're good to go. Just hit save, and you're done. So that's it for the live demo. I'll jump back over to uh, Geek's machine. I think we've got a few more slides. And then we'll do a Q&A session. So give me just a second here. Show my screen. All right, there you go, Keith. All right, so for the sake of time, uh, we're just going to do a little bit of a summary wrap-up, and then we'll get into the Q&A. Uh, we saw quite a few questions come through on the GoToWebinar chat box, so thanks for submitting those. Uh, so basically what we talked about today are some of the core elements of um, the Win in a One uh, software, specifically our new architecture. Um, we have obviously very various direct connects to our major SCADA vendors like GE, Rockwell, and uh, GE, Rock, Rockwell, and Wonderware. Um, Steven covered pretty in-depth the power of filter subscriptions uh, without having to manually import from like a CSV or an Excel file. Uh, easy setup and maintenance. Uh, you don't have to restart the product anymore. Uh, when you make a change, um, it automatically saves. And you click a little save box in the right hand corner of your screen, and everything's running as it serves in your background. Uh, so you don't have to go in like the old version 7, go to file, save, and restart uh, configuration. Uh, you can set up simple call out list uh, for a small water wastewater plant, or you can get into a lot more advanced type logic setting up if-then scenarios, uh, as well as complex schedules, uh, maybe for a larger 
uh, facility, uh, like maybe something um, the city of Los Angeles might have. Um, and various notification methods. Um, still, a lot of these are um, carried over from Pro, but we're moving forward uh, with enhancing some of the technology we're using. So SMS, email, voice, and now supporting voice over IP where you don't necessarily have to use a sound card uh, such as a dialogic card. Um, one of the big things we're working on and we'll more than likely have a webinar on in October is our new mobile app. Um, so stay tuned for more information um, on that. Uh, lots of exciting things like uh, an app chat box where operators can exchange information uh, when an alarm comes through. Uh, that's just one of the uh, small snapshot features that we're really trying to work on uh, to make the more uh, make the, the app more useful and obviously more collaborative. And then the, um, the next thing is being able to configure uh, multiple notification methods for redundancy. And uh, we'll now kind of turn it over um, to answering some of your questions. Flip back to that after I'm done, read some of the questions off. So, all right, we'll just kind of jump in here. Uh, do we still support dialogic cards? That question comes from Doug Swanson. Um, in the new platform, no, we're not supporting the dialogic card. Um, we are supporting the tap analog tappy modems, but uh, we're not currently supporting the dialogic card. Uh, I can't tell you with any certainty whether we will or not. Um, so we are making the move to voice over IP, which we've seen a uh, high adoption of. Um, but I do realize that a lot of people out there have the dialogic cards and they were fairly um, reliable. Um, right now, I don't have any plans to, to support it again. It was the new stuff, as I'm told by Dialogic um, fairly often, that they may just stop making those cards altogether any day. They're pretty old. They've been out for a very long time, and I don't know how much longer uh, they will continue to uh, produce those cards. Uh, though there may be an alternative, uh, maybe another um, PCI-type um, uh, analog modem similar to the dialogic card, but, uh, but again, not right now. Uh, we have a question specifically, it looks like it's from an end user, uh, Phil Novak. We have a small water wastewater plant which still primarily uses 191 and a beeper. Emails are secondary. What technology is recommended and what benefits might we see if used if we use something other than beepers? So something very similar to a beeper would be SMS. So using a cellular modem to send a text to somebody's phone. If they're using, that will work on any phone, whether they're using a flip phone, flip phone or a smartphone. Uh, and what are some benefits of using that? With the pagers, that was a one-way communication. So you can send an alarm to somebody. They couldn't reply back to it. So with SMS, you can, one, you can control all the information that's sent through a text you can reply to it to acknowledge the alarm. You can also request alarms and request reports, which give you uh, uh, alarm. Uh, it's like an alarm request and, a, uh, and um, gives you the real-time value of any tags you have configured it within a report. So, um, so my recommendation, if you want to keep it similar to pagers, you can move to SMS. Uh, but you could also uh, move to the mobile app, Mobile 911, if you're using smartphones which is, uh, it's, it, you get the same information, but it's a lot quicker and easier to digest than uh, reading it through a text uh, text message and replying with ticket numbers and so on. Um, second question, can we use phone and SMS in tandem? That's from Brady Bottom. Yeah, of course. Uh, so you can have a lot of common use cases that people will uh, send a text message, uh, wait some amount of time, and then... Uh, send a phone call out, you can absolutely do that. Um, in the previous product, it was kind of difficult to get the timing of that right, but with those basic tactics, you can, it's much easier. You put in a, a text notification, put a phone notification, and then another text, another phone, it will go in that exact order. So you can, you can, you can use all the notification <laughs> methods together at one time if you wanted. There's no limit there. 
Uh, Uri, we're going to swing it over to you and have um, we have a quick question. What trends are you seeing um, in some of your project implementation at CH2M specifically for water wastewater facilities? I think that one of the trends is um, smart cities where the entire public work system is um, work, uh, work system data is integrated and available to the uh, um, city management level where now in many cases um, water and wastewater completely segregated systems that's something that recently came up and we, we are definitely um, excited about that um, possibility and um, planning on working on towards that uh, goal of uh, kind of integrating and creating maybe some kind of a central management, uh, central location, I guess, for the reporting purposes. Um, virtualization is definitely something we've been pushing hard um, towards, um, migrating from the physical boxes to the virtual um, environments. Uh, mainly for us, it's a VMware um, virtualization technology that's what we've been using. Um, there's others. Um, such as Hyper-V, Citrix, but um, for us, uh, VMware has been the standard. Um, in terms of a future for wastewater, um, one of the um, considerations, and that's more of a, not so much the technology, it's more of a future for wastewater, is a re reclamation of wastewater for um, irrigation and um, non-portable uses. In fact, um, that that's one of the reasons why wastewater treatment plants uh, started being called uh, water resource recovery facilities. Um, the issue of water, especially in Southwest, um, is definitely um, a major issue, and uh, technology is there to uh, hopefully address some of those issues. Okay, great. Thank, thanks for that feedback. Um, let's see. Take a couple more and then wrap it up by four. Um, will this replace existing Win 9 and 1 under support contract? And then there's another one. Is this a free upgrade to existing pro users? So depending on what version of Win 9 and 1 you're on, and if you are on support, um, right now the upgrade path is if you have Win 9 and 1 basic and you're on support, you can upgrade to Win 9 and 1 standard. If you're on Win 9 and 1 pro, and you have a support contract, or you're, you're valid in support, uh, you can upgrade to Win on One Interactive. So uh, we are also working on a import utility, and there will be more news coming out on that in the coming months. Uh, let's see. Are the multi-tech USB modems still supported on the new Win on One? Uh, yes. Uh, we're still supporting the Taffy modem for um, analog voice callouts. Is Win901 um, adding Indusoft as a direct next SCADA source? Uh, that is on our radar and something um, that is also uh, we do plan to make a direct connect for Indusoft. So we'll go ahead and wrap up here. Just close the question box. So Again, uh, we want to thank you guys for your time. Um, I know your time is valuable. Um, as many of you are, are working on major projects uh, with specific uh, SCADA implementation, uh, Uri, again, uh, definitely want to thank you for your time and, and some of the insights that you've provided us from, from your experience at CH2N. Uh, if you'd like to check out um, or if you'd like more information, uh, one of us, here in the office can give you a more technical deep dive into our new architecture uh, as well as some of the ways that we're helping small and large water treatment and wastewater plants alike. Uh, if you'd like to try out the new version and, and kind of take some of the stuff that uh, Steven showed you, uh, whether it's the basic tactic or the advanced tactics and strategies, um, we're obviously configuring a, a more in-depth schedule past the version 7 product you can check that on our website. Uh, you can download it under the Products and Manuals tab. It'll give you a 30-day 
fully functional trial. And um, if you have a specific data source that you want to know about, uh, we do have instructional videos covering system platform, factory talk alarm and events, uh, wonder we're in touch, um, and quite a few others on our YouTube channel. So again, uh, this is Steve, Gary, and Keith uh, signing off. So uh, we look forward to your participation uh, in our next session. So hope everyone has a, a great day. Thank you.